Verse 18, these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word. Listen to me carefully. You and I, with our thoughts, our attitudes, our appetites, have the capacity to put a stranglehold on the promise that God has given. He talks here about giving ourselves for weeds to grow. Anybody have, anybody a gardener in here? I, I'm not, my wife is. Although we just are in the process of doing a wonderful garden and I'm cheering her, I'm cheering her on. <laughs> go, Benny, go. And as soon as my hot peppers are in full bloom, I will help her harvest. That's, that's my responsibility. And we have a little orchard of about 30 trees, and I'm going to pick the apples too. That's my gardening part. That's my part. Go, Benny. Give me an apple. Go, Benny. Why do weeds grow bigger, faster, stronger than the plant you want to grow? It's a weird thing. It happened because of the fall. Here he says... Weeds grow and choke the word of the Lord. The promise over your life can actually be choked, strangled by the deceitfulness of riches, the cares of this world, and the desire for other things. Let me break down those three things for you. The cares of this world, that word for cares, actually comes from two words. Number one is divided, and number two is mind. Divided mind. Cares of this world is the divided mind. A lot of people experience, not you, it's them other folks, a lot of people <laughs> experience anxiety, confusion, and stress because their mind is divided. Too many options. Jesus and all these other options. Years ago, I remember hearing a, a story, read a story actually, in a book about this uh, this gentleman was a, it was a great athlete and uh, loved competition, loved sports of all kinds. And he ended up in, in a horrible accident, lost an arm. And, uh, and he spent considerable time after that trying to find some kind of a sport that he could be involved in with only one arm. And he ended up, for some reason, picking up the sport called handball. Anybody ever played handball? Man, that's painful. It's, uh, give me a racket. I'd rather hit the ball with a racket. It's this hard little ball, almost as hard as a golf ball that you hit off your hand that has a thin layer of leather over each hand. You hit it off the wall as in racquetball. And it's a very intense and competitive sport. So he picked up this particular sport called handball. And he became so good over time, he became the club champion. And then his club entered him in the state championship. And he competed on a statewide level and he ended up taking first place in his state for handball. Following his championship match, a newspaper writer uh, wanted to interview him. So he interviewed him, and one of his questions, he says, how is it that a man with only one hand can defeat all your opponents that play with two hands? And he said, oh, it's easy. He said, options. And the newspaper guy said, what do you mean options? He said, when the ball comes off the wall, my opponent has to decide what hand to use. He only had one option. The decision had been made. Too many Christians have too many options. And we invite confusion. When you invite confusion you actually create the atmosphere for anxiety, worry, all of those things. It doesn't mean we would never face it otherwise. It's just we always have the upper hand when we only have one option. When our only option is, I am hungry for the will of God. I don't care what it tastes like in the moment. It's what I am hungry for. It's what I want. Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me. And I, I the will of God sometimes is very sour or bitter to the taste, but it's always pleasant to the stomach. The will of man is always sweet to the taste, 
but it turns sour in the stomach. And there's something about the will of God that nourishes and strengthens. So here we have this issue of the cares of life. So think about it this way. Every moment that you and I spend in worry and anxiety, we are actually feeding the beast that strangles the promise over our destiny. Every moment that I spend in worry and anxiety, I'm actually fueling, I'm feeding the beast that is working to put a stranglehold over my destiny, over the promises over my life. The devil cannot read our thoughts. Anybody say amen to that? He cannot read your thoughts. But he can read the thoughts he suggests. And I think he can sometimes tell when one of his suggestions called fiery darts has made it past the shield of faith because it affects our countenance. And whenever that has happened, there is a, an agreement. And the enemy is always empowered by our agreement. Agreeing with the enemy empowers him to kill, steal, destroy. I don't want to over-exaggerate the devil's role but I do want to make us alert in the assignment because I believe so much. I've talked about this subject from different angles a lot in the last year. I feel like we're coming into a season of unusual, unusual breakthrough, but it requires the fulfillment of promise. How many of you have a whole bunch of promises over your life that are not yet fulfilled? Amen. All right, so here we have the cares of this world, the divided